I thought they probably thought she was no threat. But see, the day came. Medeba didn't awake prophetess, which would be great because to be the judge and the top spiritual authority, I mean, no one can argue with you that. Hey, 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 I'm the prophetess, God card, and legal card, Deborah, boss of the world. But see, that's not what she did. The day said that she awoke and arose a mother in Israel. She didn't stay sitting and judging. She looked around and she said, the way things are is not the way they should be. And I am going to use my influence and I am going to spend my life to see things change from the way they are to the way they should be. Where are the mothers in the house of God that are tired of sitting and judging? Confident women do not sit and judge. They say, I am going to stand in the gap to see things change. And when Deborah awoke, she spoke strength to a man named Barak. When the Deborahs awake, the princes begin to arise. When the mothers of in the house of God begin to awake, they don't come and push aside the men. They come and say, is God not with you? Go and engage the enemy. You will take him out. We need women that will stand alongside the men and speak the word of the Lord to them in strength. But Barak had been captive and oppressed for so long. He said, you know what, Deborah? I'll go, but only if you go with me. And she said, all right. The way you're going to go about this, the honor is going to go to a woman. And she wasn't talking about herself. She was talking about one of my favorite women, J.L. J.L. the violent. J.L. The, Ken the Kenanite. J.L. the tent-dwelling woman. Now, what is amazing about J.L. was J.L.'s husband was the spy that sent word to Caesarea that the Israelites were amassing. And so here is this allegiance of her family with the enemy. But you know what? When God begins to do something, all old allegiances and alliances are over. I love Psalm 45. It says, forget your father's house because the king is enthralled with your beauty. My father was born on the hill here in St. Louis. My dad's an alcoholic. I believe he had the call of God on his life. He never fulfilled it. And he lives his life really in despair. When I came to the table for marrying John, John had all the good things. I had all the bad things. I remember his family was like, okay, there's a lot of divorce in that family. We've never had divorce. I'm like, okay. And I remember for the first couple of years that, you know, I was around, it was like, oh, that's not from our side of the family. That must be from your side. I was like, it's all from me. I'm sure every bad thing is from my lineage. But see, it's not about our natural lineage. It's about our spiritual lineage. Because Psalm 45 says, instead of the likeness of your father, you will establish your sons as princes in the likeness of your husband. Jesus is establishing royal lineage for his daughters. You can separate your children. You can separate the lives that you have within your circle of influence for legacy and honor. And so what happens is, this army amasses, they go to the Kidron Valley, the enemy comes, and what happens? The wheels start falling off their chariot. They're remembering back what had happened to the Egyptians. They go into a panic. Israel says, oh my goodness, God is finally fighting for us. And it said they routed the, uh, the, um, their enemy all the way and slaughtered all. And Caesarea goes running to the tent of Jael because he knew he'd get refuge there. The name JL means value. God used a stay-home mother to take out the commander of the army of the enemy. Don't tell me you can't do something because you're not in a pulpit. If you will value where you are at, if you will understand that whenever God begins to do something, he will always anoint whatever is in your hand. JL had a tent peg. I don't know what's in your hand, but you do. You have something in your hand that God wants to anoint so that you can take out the enemy that has surrounded your life. 
She takes him out with the tent peg. I would have just shot him. But see, I'm not very good with a tent peg. If I went after somebody with a tent peg, they would have nothing to fear. But you know what? She didn't run out on the battlefield with a tent peg. She waited till he came into her area, which gives us another clue to what confident women do. Confident women strike when the enemy draws near. God never used the women on the battlefield except for as encouragement and holding up the standard. Joan of Arc was with the armies of France. She held the standard to lift their eyes heavenward. Women are the standard bearers. We are the ones that say there is a reason behind your fight. But when the enemy comes into your house, you don't have to call the prayer line. You don't have to call your pastor. You take him out with whatever is in your hands. Daughters, you have authority. Do not tolerate the enemy any longer. Now, confident women also understand there is power in the moment. God is always in the now. He is always in the present. Your now is the intersection of your past and your future. You are in the moment now that will determine how you're going to process the things of your past and how you're going to approach the things of your future. And women partner with God in the area of timing. It was Jesus' mother who said, all right, Jesus, they're out of wine. You need to take care of it. And what did Jesus say to his mother? Woman, it's not my time. I could never have been Jesus' mother because I'm half Sicilian. And I would have stomped my foot and said, that's it. That's it. It's been 30 years of scandal, Jesus. 30 years of people saying, what about this virgin birth? He's just making tables. Jesus, these are my friends. You are going to turn this water into wine right now, or you're grounded for a month. Do you understand this? Do you understand, Jesus? I was like, I'm sorry, Lisa, you're just going to have to go 2,000 years ahead. You'll never make it. But women know timing. We get it. See, before I had my first baby, I thought I was in control of time. I remember I had listened to a tape called Supernatural Childbirth. If it worked for you, praise the Lord. I listened to it so many times with John that John could have given supernatural birth. And uh, we listened to it to and from work, and I picked a couple dates. I was like, Wednesday. Wednesday's my day. I'm just going to pop this baby out. I mean, I'm part American Indian. We just drop those things in the field. This is so not going to be a problem. And so I remember just getting larger and larger. And then I had a rib detach. I got so big. I was never cute and pregnant. You know the women that do the little, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm 10 months pregnant and I've gained 20 pounds? No. No, no, no. I gained 50 pounds plus with my babies. I believed in a 40-pound minimum weight gain for a good baby. And so I remember with Addison, one of my ribs detached. And I was like, I can't believe this. I just don't have any more room. And then I got worms. I don't know if any of you ever had worms, but I got up one morning, I was brushing my teeth, and I saw this red line coming from my hip towards my belly button. And you're kind of weird when you're pregnant. So I called the doctor. I was like, there's a worm attacking my baby. There's a worm. It's like a red worm coming across my stomach. He's like, okay, that's a stretch mark. That is not a worm. I was just a mess. I was a total mess. And I remember my belly button was sticking out about this far. And I put a band-aid over it because I was ashamed. You know, and now I'd probably just cut a hole in my maternity dress and stick an earring in it. But back then we were, we were trying to be modest.